Hi, today we're going to talk about using a paragraph style to create what's called a running footer. I want to take this chapter title here and have it run along in the footer on the bottom of my page here. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to let you know up here in this title, I have already created a paragraph style called chapter title. And the only place I ever use this paragraph style is only for chapter titles. That's crucial. So how do we set up this running uh, chapter title at the beginning? Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my pages panel. I'm gonna double click on my A master and I'm gonna fit this in the window by going Alt Control Zero or Option Command Zero on a Mac. And then I'm gonna take my text tool and I'm gonna draw out a text frame just below the margin on my left hand page here and I'm gonna let up. It's gonna have a cursor sitting in there and I'm gonna go Commander Control Plus to zoom up on that. I'm gonna use my Alt Space Bar and I'll come over here and take a look at it. So I've got my cursor sitting in here. The first thing I wanna do is I'm gonna insert a placeholder for a page number. So I'm gonna go Insert Special Characters, Current Page Number. So now we have our placeholder for our page number. I'm gonna hit a space bar and I want to insert the chapter title. And the way I do that is I want it to be dynamic. So if I change the chapter title, I want the footer to update. So we're gonna use a little magic here. We're gonna go up under the type menu and we're gonna come down someplace you may have never went before called text variables and they have some built-in variables built into InDesign. Now, if you're not a programmer and I'm not, variables was explained to me once as a variable is just basically a container to hold information. And I can put information in that jar, we'll call it, or that container, and when I wanna see it, I pull that jar out and display it. So really to me, a text variable is just a container that can hold some text and I can show what's been put into that container. So I'm gonna come over here and pick from my defaults. Let's do this in fact. Let's go to define and we'll make a new one. I'm gonna name this uh, chapter title footer. I'm going to use the text variable called running header paragraph style. Now I know it says header, but the text I'm going to place is going to be down in the footer. It's a little confusing, but I'm going to use the running header built in text variable, and it's going to be based upon a paragraph style. That is the chapter title. So let me pick that. Now, it says use the paragraph style chapter title and wherever the first occurrence is on the page of its use, put that in the container called chapter title footer. Now, I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna click Insert. And what that does, that puts a placeholder in my footer with the less than and greater than symbols here, or chevrons. And this is a placeholder for my variable. Now, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go back to page one. But look before I do this. Notice in the pages panel, this is a left-hand page. So I'm going to go Option Command 0 or Alt Control 0 to fit the two pages or the spread in the window. I'm going to take my selection tool and I'm going to Alt or Option Shift drag a copy of this footer to this page. Okay, so now I have it on both pages. So if I double click back on my document page 1, I should see what is in the chapter. Let's see. So it says 
using a paragraph style to create running footers and sure enough look down here it is right down here in this text frame so what it's doing it's taking the first instance of the paragraph style called chapter title that's on this page putting that text in a container and displaying that text down here in this footer that's on the master page now I don't like how this is formatted so let's just do some basic formatting I'm gonna go back to my master page by double clicking on a master over in the pages panel I'm gonna click over here on this frame I'm gonna go control plus or command plus on a Mac I'm gonna take this information here with my type tool and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click in front of this A and I'm going to type the word page. Maybe I want the word page before the numbers. Now, I want this chapter title footer text to be right justified. So I'm going to go up under type to tabs. I'm going to click on a right justified tab. And I'm going to drag it along the ruler till it gets all the way over here on my right margin. And I'm going to let up. Okay. Now I'm going to go back over here in front of this chevron. And I'm going to hit tab. And that's going to force it over as a right justified tab here. Now I'm going to close my tab ruler. I'm going to come over on this side. And what I want here is the page number to be on the right or the outside. So I'm going to cut this. I'm going to click here. I'm going to paste it. And what happened here? Let me just try that again. Paste. Huh. Let me undo that. Let me just type it. So I'm going to put page and then I'm going to put in right click, insert special character, marker, current page number. But I need this right justified over there. So let me put my cursor in front of it. Let me go to type. Let me go to tabs. Let me go to a right justified tab. Let me press in the ruler and go over here to my right margin right on this marker I'm gonna let up I'm gonna click in front of the word page and I'm gonna hit my tab key so now I have the chapter title footer information here in the page number here okay let's go ahead and I'm gonna save this I'm gonna save this as chapter footer I'm just gonna hit enter now let's take a look at our document. I'm going to go back to page one. Now I still don't like this. I forgot to take the text frame here for the running footer, we'll call it, and justify it or align it, I should say, at the bottom of the text frame. So let me go back to my master. Let me take my selection tool and I'm going to do this. I'm going to click on this text frame. I'm going to hold my shift key and click on this text frame. I'm going to go up to the text frame options and I'm going to turn on preview so you can see it. And I'm going to come over here for vertical justification. Don't align to the top, but align to the bottom. And I'm going to click OK. So now that is aligned to the bottom. So let's go back to page one. We can see it. So right there it is. Now let me fit in window, Commander Control Zero. Now you say, is this really going to dynamically update? If I come up here and I type in walking and click on my selection tool to get off of that. See here, it didn't update. You lied to me, Mark. Well, the page has to refresh. Sometimes what I have to do to make this refresh is to change my zoom level. So I'm going to go Commander Control 1 to go to 100%. And I'm going to go Commander Control 0 back to fit in window. So now you see it says walking. 
So this is how you can use a unique paragraph style in conjunction with text variables and build yourself a custom text variable to make this chapter information run along the footer of the page. I'm going to show you one more little tip here while we're on text variables. Here's one thing I do. I, with all my documents, I always add a little space above the document. And that's called a slug. Now let me show you what I mean here. I'm going to go to File. I'm going to go to Document Setup because this document's already set up. And it says Margins, but down here it says Bleed and Slug. I'm going to add a 6 pica, 6 P0 or an inch of space above my document. And let's put it in here and let's see this slug space. Now let me scroll up so you can see it. It's in this area right here. Now I'm going to zoom up on this. I'm going to take my zoom tool and I'm going to click up in here a little bit. You see how this is kind of blue? So in class when I talk about this I say this little area that has this blue outline around it it's called the slug area. So if somebody slugs you and you get a black and blue mark that's why this is this blue. Now what does a slug actually do? Well it's an area of a page that doesn't print but stays with the document when I look at it in InDesign. So what I mean by that is I'm going to draw out a text frame here and I'm going to be careful not to get into the document. I'm going to stay above it. I'm going to draw out a text frame and here's what I do with almost every document. Let me go back to my basic paragraph style and I'm going to type in creation date I'm going to hit a colon and I'm going to come down and I'm going to type in revision date colon and I might even uh, put in person requesting or something like this that tells me why this document was built. So with my cursor after creation date I'm going to have InDesign keep track and put the date in I created this. So I'm going to go back to type. I'm going to come down to text variables and I'm going to insert the variable creation date. This is built into InDesign. I didn't have to create it. So it takes the information from the computer on the date this document was created. And that's pretty easy to look up. You can get information or properties about a document pretty easy. But here is the great thing. Revision. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have InDesign track when I make changes to a document and save them. So if I go up here to type and I come down here to text variable, insert variable, and I put in here modification date it's going to keep track of every time I open this document and I make changes and I save it, this date and time will update to the minute. That way if somebody asks me, Mark, did you update the course outline for InDesign last week? And I say, well, I can't even remember what I had for lunch today. So I can go back and I can look at the document in InDesign and I can see this information in the slug area and see when I revise it. Also, I can manually come up in here and type in who this was for. So I can keep track of who it was for, who requested it, the revision date, the creation date, but my love here is the revision date tracking. So this allows me to put a slug area where I can put in information that travels with this document no matter who opens it up in InDesign and keep track of these things, but it doesn't print. It's just an area where I can put some information. 
especially keeping track of the revision date. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this. It's just a unique little thing to know about how to have your chapter titles or topic titles come at the bottom of the page, how to work a little bit with some of the text variables, and how to have InDesign keep track of both the creation date and more importantly maybe to me and you is the revision date on a document. Thank you very much and if you have any questions just drop us a line at easelsolutions.com. That's mark at easelsolutions.com. Thank you.